The Indian Navy intercepted and engaged with the hijacked vessel MV Ruin that was under the control of the Somali pirates. The pirates had boarded the vessel on December 14th. The ship had 18 crew on board when it was hijacked near the Yemeni island of Skotra. Pirates do not know when to stop their antics. This causes them to make mistakes. This is a blessing in disguise, because then the U.S. Navy, the Royal Navy, and other task forces are there to correct them. And today, we have all of the best moments of Somali pirates messing with the wrong ships. Let's transport ourselves back to January 15, 2011, in the vast expanse of the Arabian Sea, where the Norwegian-owned chemical tanker Samho Jewelry found itself at the center of a high seas confrontation. In a swift maneuver, Captain Sokhe Gun altered the ship's course, attempting to stay in international waters for as long as possible. However, the persistent pirates were unrelenting, ultimately capturing the tanker. South Korean President Lee myung bak authorized the deployment of the Rocks Choi Yong, commanded by Colonel Cho yong ju to lead the Piracy Countermeasures Force. Choi Yong engaged in a cat-and-mouse game, skillfully wearing down the pirates until their resources were depleted. On January 18th, the pirates, desperate for a new target, attempted to hijack a nearby Mongolian vessel using a motorboat. However, the swift and decisive action of the Korean Navy led to the detention of the pirates, successfully recovering the Samho jewelry and rescuing every crew member from the clutches of the pirates. Attempt foiled. A pirate boat tries to board the vessel, and that's the response from the private security on board. The footage, though from some time back, is making waves on social media, showcasing the lengths to which commercial vessels go to fend off these maritime marauders. A ship under raid deploys its nautical arsenal, water cannons spraying, anti-piracy strategies in full swing. But when push comes to shove, and these measures don't shoo away the seafaring troublemakers, the response is nothing short of epic. In the latest attack on the British cargo vessel, the Nigerian Navy deployed a gunboat after receiving distress calls from the ship. In the grand tradition of naval might, if you throw stones at the Navy, be prepared for a rain of boulders in return. So to any Somali pirates who might be tuning in, heed this salty advice. Don't tango with the Navy. It's a dance you won't enjoy. Pirate Submarine the U.S. Coast Guard shared an incredible video of a mission where service members intercepted a submarine carrying a massive cargo in the eastern Pacific Ocean. The footage shows members of the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Monroe shouting at an unidentified aquatic vehicle to stop as it glided alongside the cutter on the ocean surface. Crew members leapt onto the mostly submerged vessel while it was still moving, skillfully opening the hatch. The dramatic scene unfolds, revealing a glimpse of someone inside the vessel as the hatch swings open. Upon inspecting the submarine, authorities discovered a substantial payload inside, leading to the apprehension of five suspected pirates. While the video doesn't specify the contents, it's clear that the successful operation dealt a significant blow to illicit activities in the region. This daring mission, carried out on June 18th, 2019, was part of a broader effort that saw three Coast Guard cutters intercepting 14 suspicious vessels between May and July. The total seizure included a substantial amount of cargo, emphasizing the Coast Guard's ongoing commitment to keeping our waters safe. USMS Scout versus Pirates. Check these tough people out. Marines from the Scout Sniper Platoon, Battalion Landing Team 26th Marine Expeditionary Unit, and sailors from the USS Kearsarge. They're not just sailing around, they're gearing up for an activity involving live ammunition exercise at sea, honing their skills to defend the ship against pirate skiffs. Now, what's the deal with the 26th MEU? These guys are on the move 24-7, circling the globe, and ready to jump into it whenever the President or other big commanders need a quick response 
response force. Think of them as the superheroes of the sea, always prepared for amphibious operations, crisis response, and handling limited contingency operations. Imagine around 2,200 Marines, led by a colonel, forming the MEU Dream Team. They're split into three squads, the ground combat element, the aviation combat element, and the logistics combat element. So, whenever trouble knocks, these Marines are geared up. <laughs> Take that, pirates. You don't stand a chance against the U.S. Navy. Magellan Star the Turkish frigate TCG Gochata, which was a flagship for Combined Task Force 151, received an SOS from the Maltese-flagged Greek-owned chemical tanker MV Olibji. The vessel in question had come face to face with pirates that were a bit too determined to capture it. TCG launched helicopters for ISR and quickly reached the scene to observe the perilous situation unfolding on the Olibji. Meanwhile, somewhere else, the Antigua-flagged motor vessel Magellan Star was being boarded by Somali pirates. Luckily, news came that the crew had secured themselves in a fortified area known as the Citadel. Exactly what they were supposed to do. They locked themselves into the Citadel and they killed the ship. TCG Gochata, accompanied by the USS Princeton, later joined by the USS Dubuque, swiftly responded to the Magellan Star's call for help when they noticed an unmanned skiff right alongside the vessel. the pirates attempted to use the element of surprise and gain the upper hand. This happened approximately 85 miles southeast of Mukalla, Yemen, in the piracy-prone waters of the Gulf of Aden. Despite the USS Dubuque being 1,500 miles away from its command ship, the USS Peleliu, it made an impressive 20 knots to reach the scene. As the request for mission approval traversed command channels, the Force Recon Marines aboard the Dubuque prepared themselves. Once the final authorization was received, a tactical sequence involving aviation and ship maneuvering distracted the pirates. This allowed the Marines to climb aboard the Magellan Star, overcoming the pirates and successfully rescuing the crew with the support of hundreds involved in the operation. Stronger Together the Tuvalu-flagged bulk carrier OS-35, on its journey from Klang, Malaysia to Aden, Yemen, encountered pirates. The ship promptly sent out a distress signal, prompting a swift response from the Indian Navy. Two Indian vessels, INS Mumbai and INS Tarkash, were diverted to assist the merchant vessel. Simultaneously, Chinese, Pakistani, and Italian warships in the vicinity also rushed to the scene. Upon reaching OS-35, the Indian ships established communication with the captain and crew, who had sought refuge in a secure room on the ship. The Chinese Navy deployed a team of 18 personnel to secure the 178-meter merchant vessel, with the Indian Navy providing communication support and air cover through its helicopters. After confirming that the pirates had fled during the night, the crew was successfully rescued, marking a collaborative effort among international naval forces to counteract piracy and ensure the safety of seafarers. Capturing Pirates The Yellowgate police arrested 16 Somali pirates who were captured by the Indian Navy. This arrest was part of a broader effort by the Mumbai police, resulting in a total of 119 pirate arrests across three separate cases. The arrested pirates, affiliated with the Sulima clan of Somalia, employed a new modus operandi, using deception to lure the Indian Navy closer to their mothership before ambushing them. DCP Kasser Khalid explained that instead of surrendering, the pirates engaged indicating that they likely had prior experience in hijacking multiple ships. Before their capture, the pirates had previously hijacked the Iranian merchant vessel Murtaza in November 2010, utilizing it as a mothership to navigate the Arabian Sea. Their attempt to hijack the MV Maersk Kensington led to a distress message from the vessel, relayed by the Maritime Rescue Coordination Center to patrolling ships off Lakshadweep. Following retaliation from both sides, the Murtaza sank, and the pirates, along with the hostages, jumped overboard. In a swift response, INS Suvarna launched a rescue operation, recovering the hostages and deploying a life raft for the pirates. MV Taipan The incident involving the MV Taipan unfolded on April 5, 2010, as the vessel navigated through the piracy-prone region in the Indian Ocean. The ship, operated by the Hamburg-based shipping company Komrovsky, was on its route from the United Arab Emirates to Kenya. Somali pirates targeted the MV Taipan, deploying their arsenal to successfully board and seize control of the vessel. 
In response to such piracy incidents, maritime security forces and international naval patrols of the region consistently engaged in efforts to combat piracy and ensure the safety of seafarers. Specific details of the negotiation process and any ransom demands made by the pirates were never publicly disclosed. After a period of negotiations and uncertainty, the MV Taipan, along with its crew, were eventually freed from captivity. Following its release, the MV Taipan resumed its voyages. USS Gonzales. That is the big one. That's the big one. That's the big one. That's the on the evening of March 17, 2006, the USS Gonzales, a U.S. Navy Oliver-class vessel, was on a maritime security patrol off the coast of Somalia. During this time, it detected an unidentified ship on the horizon. Gonzales identified it as a large-sized dhow, accompanied by two small skiffs, a typical formation for a pirate task group. The captain of the USS Gonzales, Commander Robert Randall, directed his crew to stalk the dhow while preparing for a board and search operation. Simultaneously, a message was sent to the USS Cape St. George, a Taekwondo Rigo class cruiser operating nearby, requesting assistance. By 0500 hours on March 18th, the Cape St. George had joined the Gonzales in trailing the Dow. Around 0540, two teams of nine men in rigid inflatable boats were launched from the Gonzales to board and inspect the suspect vessel. As the boarding teams approached, pirates on the Dow did not take it kindly and started to retaliate. During the exchange, Gonzales managed to strike a fuel drum on the Dow. The spontaneous reaction was a huge setback for the pirates, and realizing the futility of continuing the engagement, they eventually surrendered to the U.S. Navy. Cape St. George detained the pirates, and the incident concluded with the American side not only prevailing, but also coming out unscathed. Captain Richard Phillips in April 2009, a container ship operated by the Danish company Maersk Line, Maersk, Alabama, found itself in the crosshairs of Somali pirates during its voyage from Salala to Kenya. Around 240 nautical miles southeast of the Somali port city of Ail, the ship faced a hijacking attempt. Responding to the SOS, Captain Richard Phillips and the crew initiated evasive maneuvers and implemented security measures, but the pirates successfully boarded the vessel using grappling hooks. Faced with a tense standoff, Captain Phillips showed extraordinary courage by offering himself as a hostage to protect his crew, and then was later taken aboard one of the Maersk, Alabama's lifeboats. Simultaneously, the remaining crew members managed to regain control of the ship and attempted negotiations with the pirates for the release of their captain. As the situation escalated, drawing international attention, the U.S. Navy intervened. On April 12, 2009, Navy SEAL snipers executed a daring operation named Operation Neptune Spear. The operation resulted in the neutralization of three pirates and the successful rescue of Captain Phillips. The compelling events surrounding Captain Phillips' ordeal were later adapted into the film Captain Phillips, featuring Tom Hanks in the lead role. Turkish Navy in January 2009, responding to the escalating issue of piracy in the Gulf of Aden, the Arabian Sea, and the Indian Ocean, the Multinational Combined Task Force 151 was established in Manama, Bahrain. CTF-151's primary mission was clear, to counter piracy along the coast of East Africa. Initially, the Turkish Navy committed one frigate to this effort, later expanding to two G-Class frigates, Gokova and Gadis, in June 2009. After completing their mission, the Gokova and Gadiz embarked on their return voyage to Turkey in mid to late October. However, the morning of November 5, 2009 brought an unexpected turn of events. A distress signal emanated from the Greek-owned bulk carrier MV Ice Prince, calling for immediate assistance as pirates were boarding it. Rapidly responding to the call, the Turkish frigate Gadiz engaged in a tense encounter with the pirates upon arrival. Surprisingly, the pirates decided to stand down, leveraging technology the Gadiz deployed an Augusta Bell 212 helicopter to track the retreating pirates, while Turkish commandos from the Special Forces Unit were dispatched on a rigid inflatable boat to intercept the skiff. The Turkish commandos successfully detained the pirates and confiscated their equipment, ensuring a peaceful resolution to the encounter. Indian Navy On May 5, 2011, around 8.45 p.m., the Indian Navy received an SOS call reporting a hijacking on the Chinese merchant vessel MV Full City. Responding promptly, the Indian Navy diverted an aircraft and a Coast Guard ship to address the alarming situation. 
The Tu-142 maritime reconnaissance aircraft reached the scene in less than 30 minutes. Upon arrival, the aircraft observed a pirate mothership alongside MV Full City, accompanied by an empty skiff next to the merchant vessel. Conducting multiple low passes over the ship, the aircraft issued stern warnings to the pirates via radio, instructing them to vacate the area immediately. The warning had the desired effect, leading the skiff, along with the pirates, to depart the ship and head toward their mothership. As there were no surface forces near to board the MV Full City and secure the vessel, the Indian Navy aircraft maintained a vigilant presence overhead for over three hours. The TU aircraft departed the area after four hours, ensuring that surface forces were within range to proceed with boarding and sanitizing operations. P-Trap A nifty contraption wielded by seafarers to keep scallywag pirates at bay. This is no ordinary video, but a glimpse into the anti-piracy maneuvers of the Royal Dutch Navy in the treacherous North Sea in 2010 and 2011. Now, what is this P-Trap, ye ask? Tis the protective anti-piracy tranquilizer, a maritime marvel designed to ward off those sea rogues without spilling any rum. This contraption, with its barrels and tow line, creates a net-like barrier trailing behind the ship, a watery obstacle course for any pirate looking for trouble. When the ship's crew unleashes the P-Trap, those barrels dance on the waves, forming a colorful barricade marked with reflective wizardry. Tangle up in the propellers and hooks of those pesky pirate dinghies, thwarting their attempt to cozy up to the ship. What makes the P-Trap a gem of the high seas? It's as non-lethal as a kitten's purr. No need for swords or cannons, just a clever mechanism to outsmart rascally pirates. It aligns with the rules of the Maritime Code. Defend your vessel without harming a hair on anyone's head. Iranian Boat versus Navy I think he's going to want to drive around and dick us, basically. British Royal Marines were instrumental in the seizure of the Iranian tanker Grace One near Gibraltar. Suspected of breaching EU sanctions, this irritated Iran to retaliate by capturing the British-flagged oil tanker Stena Impero in a vital shipping route. In response, a British vessel, the HMS Duncan, was on high alert after the discovery of an Iranian boat known as the Blowfish in its path. The Blowfish, a remote-controlled vessel laden with booby traps, posed concerns to the HMS Duncan. Believed to be deployed by Iran's Houthi allies, the Blowfish was detected in the Red Sea as HMS Duncan sailed toward the Gulf. This heightened naval tension stems from the impounding of the Iranian tanker by the Royal Marines, accused of attempting to deliver oil to Syria. To address this escalating situation, the HMS Duncan was well prepared as it transits the Suez Canal. In the broader context, the United States has also responded to the tensions with Iran by deploying additional military assets, including the USS Arlington and Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. The Pentagon added that Washington was, quote, ready to defend U.S. forces and interests in the region, but did not seek conflict. Serious Star The MV Sirius Star, an oil tanker owned by Saudi Aramco, became a target for Somali pirates when it was hijacked on November 15, 2008, in the Gulf of Aden. Measuring 300 meters in length and carrying a valuable cargo of crude oil, the vessel's hijacking raised concerns about the security of crucial maritime routes. Somali pirates successfully boarded the oil tanker, taking control of the multinational crew. The ease with which the pirates hijacked such a significant vessel underscored the vulnerability of maritime security in the region. Negotiations for the release of the MV Sirius Star ensued between the ship's owners and the pirates. After several weeks of negotiations, a ransom of approximately 3 million US dollars was agreed upon for the release of the vessel and its crew. The ransom was delivered in a unique manner by parachute drop to the pirates on board the tanker. On January 9, 2009, the pirates released the MV Sirius Star and its crew, allowing the ship to continue its journey. The incident shed light on the intricate challenges posed by piracy off the coast of Somalia and demonstrated the pirates' audacity in targeting even large and valuable vessels. Saving Jessica Buchanan I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. 
It was on October 25, 2011, when Jessica Buchanan, a humanitarian aid worker, and her Danish colleague Paul Hagen Thisted found themselves in a life-altering situation in Galkayo, Somalia. They were navigating the landscape when Somali pirates approached and seized them. After months of being captives, Buchanan and Thisted found themselves going back and forth in a complex web of negotiations for their release. The situation took a decisive turn on January 24, 2012, when the U.S. government initiated a daring rescue operation led by the elite U.S. Navy SEAL Team 6. In military jargon, SEAL Team 6 is better known as a Tier 1 force. And Scott, that means they only get the tough ones. Under the cover of darkness, the SEAL Team executed a precision operation in collaboration with other U.S. military and intelligence agencies. In this high-stakes operation, Buchanan and Thisted were rescued and swiftly evacuated to a secure location. Uh, answered all the prayers. You know, it just makes you proud to be an American. I can never come. Buchanan and Thisted got the TLC they needed, patching up and debriefing from the roller coaster they'd been on. And because every great story deserves a book, Jessica Buchanan co-authors Impossible Odds, spilling all the deets on their wild abduction, nail-biting captivity, and jaw-dropping rescue. Longest Captivity The world's longest ever ship hijack almost lasting two years. En route to Jebel Ali in the United Arab Emirates, the slow-moving vessel, the MV Iceberg One, fell prey to Somali pirates off the coast of Eden. Unable to outrun the skiff, the Iceberg One succumbed to the pirates' control. The ransom demand for the ship was a staggering $10 million. Shockingly, the owner swiftly disowned both the vessel and its crew, leaving the hostages at the mercy of the pirates. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, with no glimmer of hope. Captain Ali Saleh's poignant words on December 17, 2010, reflected the desperation of the situation. The water we have is unclean, and we only have one meal a day. Boiled rice. That's it. The rescue mission unfolded nearly three years after the ship was hijacked. On December 22, 2012, the Puntland Maritime Police Force boarded the ship, rescuing the 22 surviving crew members after almost three years in captivity. The rescued individuals were taken to a hospital in Puntland for basic health checks before being flown home. We contact already our embassies in Nairobi, but we don't get any positive result. It was just wait, wait, wait. Ukraine versus Russia. Ukraine has reported a significant blow to Russia's Black Sea Fleet, claiming to have incapacitated and sunk a Russian landing ship in its latest drone attempt. According to Ukrainian military intelligence, video footage released depicted several naval drones approaching the Rapucha-class large landing ship Cesar Kurakov near Crimea's coast. The drone reportedly struck the port side of the ship. The Cesar Kunikov, identified as a Project 775 large landing ship with a capacity for 87 crew members, has been active in various conflicts, including those in Syria, Georgia, and Ukraine. Earlier in February of this year, Ukrainian Magara V-5 sea drones reportedly struck the Russian warship Ivanovets in a sophisticated nighttime operation, highlighting the vulnerability of Russia's Black Sea fleet against unmanned naval vessels. The Advanovets, a small projectile warship with a typical crew complement of about 40 individuals, was sunk in footage released by Ukrainian military intelligence. Ukraine's innovative use of sea drones operated by a special unit known as Group 13, specializing in unmanned naval conflict, has emerged as a strategic advantage against Russian naval forces. Big Battle in January 2011, the Battle of Minicoy Island marked a pivotal clash between Indian naval forces and Somali pirates as part of Operation Island Watch. The pirates, operating from the Prentelay 14, had been using it as a mothership in the Indian Ocean. On January 28th, the Indian Coast Guard Dornier aircraft detected the Prentelay 14, along with two skiffs, chasing the MV Verdi, a Bahamian container ship. The pirates abandoned their pursuit upon spotting the aircraft, which led to the dispatch of three Indian Navy ships, including the INS Concarso. The Concarso located the Prentele 14 approximately 100 nautical miles north of Minicoy. Despite attempts to negotiate with the pirates, a 12-hour exchange ensued. Ultimately, the Prentele 14 sank, with the INS Kalpeni and the Coast Guard ship CGS San Kalp joining in the rescue operations. In the legal aftermath, a Mumbai court in August 2017 sentenced the 15 pirates involved in the Prentele 14 hijacking to six months in prison, along with time served. USS Zumwalt 
Somali pirates attempted to board the USS Zumwalt, a U.S. stealth ship patrolling a piracy-prone area. Unaware of the ship's advanced technology and power, the pirates underestimated the potential consequences of their actions. The USS Zumwalt, measuring 183 meters in length, 24 meters in width, and weighing 15,000 tons, has really impressive features, including stealth technology. Despite its potential vulnerability in such areas, the ship's advanced automation, crew efficiency, and ability to operate in various conditions make it a formidable force. The pirates, driven by motives ranging from political to economic incentives, may not have recognized the Zumwalt's identity and persisted in their approach despite the evident arsenal. However, the Zumwalt's sophisticated defense mechanisms proved to be a fatal mistake for the pirates. Equipped with Nula decoy projectiles to divert perils and ram projectiles capable of intercepting anything before reaching the ship, the presence of trained Navy soldiers and experienced crew members on board further ensures the ship's capability to repel pirates effectively. Despite the high-risk nature of the area, Zumwalt's successful defense showcases the importance of technological superiority and skilled personnel in countering piracy. Captured Crew in late March 2023, an event occurred in the Gulf of Guinea involving the Danish-owned Liberian-flagged oil tanker Manjasa Reformer. The vessel, measuring 135 meters in length and carrying 16 crew members, encountered pirates approximately 162 miles west of Port Point Noir in the Republic of Congo. Upon boarding the tanker, the pirates seized control, prompting the crew to seek refuge in the vessel's secure room. With communication severed, the crew remained isolated as the pirates commandeered the ship. In a swift response, the French Navy tracked the tanker's last known location to the waters off the coast of Sao Tome and Principe in the Gulf of Guinea. Their intervention proved successful as they boarded the vessel without encountering resistance. Inside, they discovered the crew, who revealed that six of their colleagues had been kidnapped by the pirates. By the time the French Navy arrived, Arrived, the pirates had already fled upon realizing the presence of naval forces. While the owners of the Manjasa Reformer did not disclose whether a ransom was paid, they assured that the rescued crew members were in good health and underwent a thorough recovery process following the whole ordeal. Gallons of Diesel in 2017, the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency achieved notable success by thwarting the hijacking of the Thai-registered oil tanker MT-MGT-1 off the east coast state of Terengganu. The tanker, loaded with almost 240,000 gallons of diesel, had gone missing in the South China Sea, triggering a swift response from the MMEA. A special forces team from the MMEA utilized aircraft to locate the missing tanker. Upon pinpointing its location, the team boarded the vessel, successfully apprehending 10 Indonesian pirates. However, during the operation, three other pirates managed to escape on a speedboat. Efforts to pursue the escaping suspects faced challenges when warnings from an aircraft were issued, and the pursuit had to be called off as the helicopter chasing the speedboat ran low on fuel. To continue the pursuit, Malaysia deployed the KM Segatang, a fast interceptor boat, but unfortunately, it was unable to stop the fleeing pirates. The successful intervention by Malaysian special forces earned praise from the executive director of the Regional Cooperation Agreement on Combating Piracy and Armed Robbery Against Ships in Asia, acknowledging the agency's effectiveness in stopping the pirates. It's time for today's open discussion. The Royal Fleet Auxiliary RFA vessel Fort Victoria was cruising approximately 420 nautical miles from the Seychelles and 350 nautical miles from the Somali coast, doing its duty as part of NATO's Combined Task Force 508. Fort Victoria got wind that a Spanish fishing vessel, not too far north of their position, was facing off against a gang of pirates. Without skipping a beat, Fort Victoria's Lynx helicopter took to the skies, ready for some high seas detective work. As the helicopter swooped in, it spotted two suspicious vessels, a whaler and a skiff, lurking around the fishing vessel. The skiff, being the speedy Gonzales of the sea, noticed the heli and started to sail away. But our Lynx helicopter isn't one to back down from a chase. After issuing warnings, the skiff had no choice but to hit the brakes. They captured the pirates and were taken to Fort Victoria via boat, turning the vessel into an impromptu pirate holding facility. But the action didn't stop there. Fort Victoria's Royal Marines, channeling their inner Jack Sparrow, board the whaler and another skiff in the vicinity. They ended up capturing seven pirates with not a single scratch on either side. Thank you very much for watching the video. Do like and share it with your friends. 
subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming amazing videos. Thank you once again.